Good morning, everyone, to our Sunday uh, session, and uh, we welcome you all for today's meeting, and we'll start uh, saying a passage from Happy Life. Victories achieved illegally are unreal. They leave a bitter t taste in the mouth. Since they are unfair, they wound others and cannot really benefit anyone. He who builds on another's property will end up losing his, ho his house. Happiness achieved at the cost of others, tears can never be fair. Be careful with your causes and strive only with legal support and a moral foundation. Beautiful passage. Beloved Father, we are so blessed for the opportunity to receive information, to receive more, more knowledge about you and uh, the things you have created. And we're asking, Father, this morning to be open-minded to receive the message, today's message, and bless upon our friend Anisio in order for him to deliver this message. May we continue living loving one another may we continue learning we ask father your permission for us to start our sunday meeting in the name of jesus christ amen thank you Renato. Kind of, it's kind of connected the message today, but they are always are, right? But um, I got uh, a random chapter of the gospel according to Spiritism, right? And today, um, what came for me to talk about was chapter 22 of the gospel, which is the one about divorce. <laughs> is <Ooh>. the one <laughs> exactly? You shall not separate what God united in a. It's a difficult chapter. <laughs> For all of us that, you know, for all, the older we get, the more experience we have, right? But I, I got an insight that's new to me, right, today. I'm going to share with you the insight I got. And um, here goes, uh, okay, so I'm not going to discuss the, if you, if you read the chapter, back in the day when Kardec wrote the book, divorce was not legal, right? So uh, uh, um, at the time... Uh, you could not divorce. Your marriage would be, um, uh, cannot be, could not be broken. And that was a big problem at the time. Some kings did. And we're not going to go there because now, nowadays divorce is legal, right? And so it's something that we, we do. And unfortunately, it's something that happens a lot, quite a bit, right? So most marriages actually end up in divorce. And it's more than 50%. And uh, so this is not the, the discussion today. Um, but the discussion is, what is the spiritual teaching? Why is this? Wh how to deal with that, with the awareness of spirituality? And here comes the problem, right? Um, when we're not mature, what, what, what is the spirituality, right? So let's think about that. We think about spirituality as a growing and the maturing, where we understand, we become, we are on, the, on a journey to become a loving being, right? That's the journey of spirituality, right? So that's what we mean when we say spiritualizing oneself means we are strengthening our ability to love, right? So love, the universe, everything, right? And uh, there's very many steps. You know, first we have to get compassion, tolerance, all those things that lead us in that way. Even awareness, knowledge, right? And uh, we are, when we are in the beginning of the stage of, of spirituality, spirituality, in many cases, we live just a material life. We live just with the uh, perception of what is important for me in that moment. And, and if you are incarnate, so like us, if you are in the flesh, like we are right now, 
your problems of the day are the most important thing, right? Usually material possessions, usually resources, things like that, right? Uh, the sensations of the flesh, right? And uh, the less mature you are in terms of spirituality, the more important those things are, right? And we are right now uh, at a difficult time in, in our society because spirituality is kind of um, on the back burner. It's not, it's not something I think that's as strong as it was in the past because religion is very weak right now and we're still attached to ideas that are no longer acceptable of punishment and all those things. Right? And we have materialism that has not found the soul yet. Science has not found the spirit yet, we think. It will. It's, actually, it's just a question of time. So we are in a delicate time right now where materialism is so strong and people are so focused on, on the material things. And, and of course, in that situation, everything gets touched in marriage as well. Right? When people marry, right, there's a lot of influence from the material side, actually, right? Right? which is natural. And, uh, and uh, so, the less much, uh, evolved you are, the, the less evolved number, the less spiritual you are, the importance you put on other people um, gets proportionally measured. Like, what I, what I mean, if you think this is your life, if you think you only have one shot in your life, and this is it, and it's going to be over, the importance of others in your life is kind of diminished because you are the center, right? You have to do things for you. You have to live a life the best way you can with the resources you can, right? The more you understand that this is not a single life, you're not going to die, not, neither you nor, nor anybody else you know will die, and this is a long run, right? If this, there's multiple lives, there's experiences when, when the, our bodies stop functioning, we're still alive. Then you understand, oh, wait a minute, the people I have right now, I might need them in the future, or I, my relationships won't go away. Then the perspective might change, right, of how we deal with one another. And that's actually, I think, the core of the problem, right? When you're not experienced, when you don't consider that, your actions toward others will be proportional to your understanding. Here's the thing. The more we mature spiritually, the more each person in our life gains in importance. Each person, because our journey will be always based on the people we met. That's why more mature spirits are very careful in their relationships. Because they know every person you bring to your relationships will never live. Because they're part of your life. And spirits that are immature, they don't care. They're very prolific. They, they go, stumble upon relationships. They go because they don't see a, an importance. A person can be discarded. A person can come and go and no longer compatible or no longer, he or she will go away. But the more aware you are of spirituality, you understand that that's not the case. And I think that is the deepness, is the deep meaning of the teaching of not separate what God put together. Because every single one of us, as we navigate life, as we go from one life to the next and experience all the, the, the lessons we need to grow and to become better, there's going to be a finite, a, a, a certain number of people that are going to be in a part of our life. And once you bring someone to your life, once that person was part of your memory, of you had experiences together, right? Here comes the bad news or the good news. They never leave. You, we, all of us, we cannot delete people from our life. They're part of our experience. They're part of our journey. Right? <clears throat> all of them, all people that came to our life, that were, shared this experience somehow with us, 
are part of our life. And as we grow spiritually, those relationships will be worked out for our own growth. There's an amazing book, a story written uh, in a book uh, psychographed by Chico Xavier, by the Spirit Emmanuel. There's a few classics that pe people know about. It's like 2,000 years ago when uh, Emmanuel was actually had his life with um, during the incarnation of Jesus among us, right? There's 50 years later. There's a few Paul and Stephen. Those are classics most people know. They're more famous, I think, that uh, Emmanuel psychographed uh, through Chico Xavier. Chico Xavier psychographed, right? But there's one book that's not as famous, maybe. It's called a Renunciation, or Renuncia, in Portuguese. Renunciation in English, that has been translated to English. I think if you want to understand divorce, or you understand relationships, you should read that book. To me, it was funny, because I read the others. Um, I couldn't finish it uh, 50 years later, because of the Roman names, they, they got me. But uh, Paul and Stephen is great, 2000 years ago is amazing. But this book is, is, was the one I couldn't let go. I was reading it. It's the story of a spirit that happened to be a woman. A bigger. Exactly. A spirit that didn't need earth anymore. Had moved on to other experiences because he had achieved all the lessons of earth. Right? It's a, a spirit that was mature spiritually. Right? Had achieved a certain level of maturity that, that where the experiences we have on earth will, were no longer necessary for that spirit, right? But there were loved ones left behind. There were spirits still of their relationship of that person, that spirit. They were still here on earth, struggling and suffering. And uh, the first chapter of the book is uh, the story in the spiritual realm still, right? Where this male spirit, right, uh, connected to the gender of you know, the male, is preparing for a, a new life, and it's full of problems, unfortunately, still attached, still, still doing all the mistakes we make here on earth, and he is terribly afraid of the life that's upon him to start, right? And she comes as light to visit, because it's, it's a person from her past, and she comes to visit, right? And they have an interaction, she comes to give him strength, and I'm going to help you as much as I can. And what does he do? He does the, the terrible thing. He asks for her help, and asks her to come with him <coughs> to a physical life on earth. And um, she decides to come to be with that struggling loved one that's still in the back. And the book is, a, is the story of their life, right? And, uh, and the sacrifices she made, because as a higher spirit, when you come to earth, you don't come with all the mission. They, your mission becomes, if you, if you bring like a, a, a great player, think about a, 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 a soccer player. If you bring like Messi to your team, a, a great player, you're, you're going to aim for big things, right? And that's the life uh, that happens. So she, she comes to affect the family, and the book goes on. And it's painful to see all the tasks she undertakes for, for the moral transformation, not just for her, but for, for the whole family, for the whole you know, group of spirits that incarnating together, right? And yet, I'm not going to tell you the story of the book if you haven't. The guy is, is, is challenging. <laughs> in his transformation and uh, I wish you I wish you you see the what happened it's, I'm not gonna tell you the story right but that's it all the people we have in our life they are treasures it doesn't mean that we have to stay with them or it doesn't mean that we are bound together to live together uh, no, it doesn't. Uh, it, it doesn't mean we, we don't have to be we don't have to be sometimes apart to fulfill our missions. But we have to understand that once a person comes to our life, it's part of our story. It's part of who we are. 
And at some point in time, we're going to be working on that. There's no one that comes to live with us that gets discarded. And as we evolve, as we grow spiritually, we will come back to all those people as time goes. And we will consciously try to be a part of their progress, right? And the relationships will change over time, right? We know that tables flip in terms of, you know, the experiences we have life after life. But that's why God gives us usually, uh, that's why we tend to gravitate to the same people. That's why uh, typically our story repeats because we revisit the lessons with every single person, right? Don't get confused that, um, oh, because this person is in my life, I have to put up with whatever is done and mistakes or I have to stay married. It's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is those people are part of our life and we have to do what's best for us and for them so we grow together. Sometimes the separation is the best. Sometimes, you know, we grow much more separated than we grow together. Sometimes that's experience we need to value, to, to have, you know, whatever we need. So don't get so attached to the marriage part of it, to the legal framework in having the bodies together on earth, right? But what we have to understand is that in spirit, in the longer journey, we're together. We're going to be part. Because what happens? We don't die. So what happens if you, if, you, if you have someone in your life and then you, you split, which is natural, maybe sometimes because of the experience on earth, eventually we're going to find each other in the spiritual realm as well, in other life. We will, because we know each other. Because we know each other. Right? And probably we're going to be expected for our own conscience to find in our strength, in our understanding, how to be a force for good, an uh, agent of goodness to all those people that were part of our life. Because we have a special connection with them. Uh, that's why higher spirits, that's why you should be very careful when you date. <laughs> you understand now how delicate for a higher spirit is dating? Because the moment you date someone, that person might be part of your story. And there you go. Right? So be careful. If people knew and understood that, right, I think we'd be more careful. Right? Uh, uh, and, but it's good that in our early days we don't because we make our story richer. Right? And we're going to have all those people sooner or later part of our spiritual growth. Right? So we grow together. If you think about it. we are a chain of spirits, a, a, a chain of beings that don't die, that are united by a common creator, right? And a common goal of, you know, establishing, developing uh, love in our lives, right? And love can only manifest through other people, right? Can only manifest in our relationship to other people as well, in ourselves, of course. Right? So that's the spin that I, that's the, the way I, 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 I saw this today. So truly, marriage and divorce are human laws. But the spiritual laws are unchangeable. That we are supposed to be connected to one another and are supposed to be levers of growth in whoever God placed in our, in our, in our, in our path. That's the conversation for today. We say goodbye now to our friends and we get ready for our meditation. Mm -hmm.